is coming. All these voices. They're not yours. You had no right to them when you were alive, and you have no right to them when you're dead. Huh? Say, That's what it sounded like. Good, you know who I am. And you know I'm not playing. You're going to let those women go. In Jesus' name, you're going to let those women go. Even here watching us right now? Watching us right now. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Staring Into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr. And with me as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? Good evening, guys. I hope everybody's having a good week. Tonight's episode is going to be pretty interesting. We're going to be talking about a case that we just finished up here in Virginia. And it did something that I didn't actually think was possible to do, which is change my mind about orbs. And I'll explain what I mean. Um, I'm not a big fan of orbs. I don't put a lot of stock in them. Uh, a lot of people will present orbs as paranormal evidence, and usually it's dust or it is a bug or something like that flying around. So I don't really put a bunch of stock in orbs as far as it being evidence. Um, but this this case may have just changed my mind. I'll give you a breakdown of, of what happened here. Andy received a, a call about this case. It, uh, a woman wanted him to come and to investigate the house. They have a security system set up at the home that is filming all the time. And she also had an elderly gentleman that was living there. It was one of their relatives. And he was very close to passing away. So he was coming to the end of his life. And all of these orbs started showing up on the security camera. Now, before this, they didn't have any kind of activity or any kind of orbs. And then all of a sudden, they were everywhere. Now, when you hear something like that as an investigator, you kind of think, okay, you got security cameras, you got orbs showing up, somebody left the window open, somebody left the door open, and some, some bugs got in. Or you forgot to clean for a little while, and now you've got dust everywhere in your home. So what you're picking up on your camera most likely is a moth flying around or something like that, or dust floating through the air. That's what is usually the case when you're debunking something like this. Because when, when you're going in to do an investigation, people need to realize your first duty is to try to explain the activity any way you can. You want to try to find a plausible scientific reason why what is happening is happening to rule out any kind of paranormal activity. <laughs> if you can do that, then you can bring a lot of peace to the homeowner and everybody's happy unless that person wants there to be paranormal activity, in which case sometimes they get a little angry. So that's always what we try to do first is figure out what is happening. We look at the, the stuff that the homeowner told us and we say, okay, this is the activity you're having. How can we explain that? What is making that happen? So in this case, we thought cut and dry, real, real easy. It's going to be a simple case of going in, debunking it, and moving on with our life. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm recording the show right now. It, it, I'm in the middle of a lightning storm. So, I mean, the thunder is just booming. It's beautiful. I love it. So we go in. Andy and Tucker went to handle the initial interview. Um, I was supposed to be there that night, but my wife had a fall, and I decided to stay home and take care of her instead because... I figured it's just an initial interview and it's an easy orb case. It's a debunk. It's not anything crucial. So they go and they get ready to, to go and do the investigation. Uh, he finds out, Andy finds out that the gentleman actually passed away that morning. 
so he kind of didn't want to do the investigation at that point. He's thinking, man, this, this old man just died. So maybe we ought to give the family a week or two to be able to process and, and go through the emotions and, and all that kind of stuff before we go in there and do an investigation and debunk, you know, especially when you're talking about something like, like this, because with, with the family going through the tragedy of, of the old man dying, they're going to want to look for the supernatural and the paranormal. They're going to want to see more than is there in the activity. So it's always a good idea when something like this happens, you want to give it a little bit of time before you go in. And, you know, Andy made that, that case to them that maybe we ought to wait a while before we go in there and do the investigation because the old man just passed and, you know, the family needs time to grieve. But the family was adamant that they absolutely wanted him to come in anyway, uh, that they had questions and they needed answers and, and they needed to explain what they saw on the security camera and that they had new footage, which was way more compelling than what we had already seen. So Andy goes there with Tucker to do the initial interview and, and investigation, kind of debunk it. And he gets to watch the new footage on the security camera. But when Andy sees the footage, what he sees is truly remarkable. In the footage, you have all of these orbs flying around the older gentleman. He's laying in his bed, and the orbs are just circling all around him. And you see the old man is interacting with these orbs. So he's actually reaching up to try to touch them and talking to them, which is pretty cool. And there is no fear on the old man's face, and he's not upset by what he's seeing. It's almost like wonder. And shortly after, the old man passed away. So they go in and they set up equipment in order to try to communicate with anything that's there. Um, they actually got in contact with multiple spirits and through the investigation, they determined that it was the spirits of his dead relatives. That's what the spirits claim to be. Now, when I say that, I need to say also that a lot of times demonic and malevolent entities will pretend to be your relatives in order to gain your trust and to have you invite them in. So that is the disclaimer. That is the warning that this happens. So you have to be careful. But there was no ill intent, at least not that night. There was no attacks. There was no feeling of dread, nothing like that. And Andy has studied to be a demonologist. He is well-versed in casting out demonic entities and exorcisms, and he's deep in the Bible. He knows what he's doing. So his judgment was that it actually was the spirits of the family members. And when I say that, for people that are listening that aren't involved in a paranormal, that might be like a, well, okay, so what? moment for you. You might think, okay, but for people that are involved in the paranormal, that's kind of a whoa moment because there's this ongoing debate in the paranormal, whether ghosts are all demons or if ghosts are creatures like from another dimension, or if they are the, the spirits of human beings that have lived on earth. Now, I'm not going to say which side of that is right. I, I happen to not believe that, that all ghosts are demonic. I, I just don't believe that because I, I have decades of experience dealing with the paranormal and with different types of entities. And I've went up against a lot of demonic entities. I've cast out demons. I have worked on exorcism cases. I have went to war with demonic forces. So I have a decent understanding of the demonic, and I don't think 
that every single spirit you run across is demonic. I also don't think that every single ghost is a human being that was alive once. I think that there's all kinds of stuff out there. I think you're dealing with some human spirits. You're dealing with some demonic spirits. You're dealing with some things that are just other. They're just in the other category. They come from somewhere else. Now, as a Christian, there's a lot of debate between Christians about that very topic as well, because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And people take that as meaning that there are no ghosts, that you can't be here as a ghost. But experience tells me otherwise. You know, I don't know what part of the body or of the person is left behind because mankind is a trinity where the body, the soul, and the spirit. So the soul goes to heaven or hell. The body goes to the ground. Maybe the spirit kind of hangs out here. You know, uh, the spirit, according to some, is supposed to kind of shepherd the soul to the afterlife. But maybe it doesn't stay there. Maybe it takes the soul to heaven or hell where it's supposed to go and then comes back to earth. Maybe what's left behind is some sort of psychic impression of who you were that isn't you at all. Unanswered questions, man. We, we honestly just don't know. There's a lot of theories, and I'm not saying anybody's wrong. But what I'm saying is this is a woe moment because I think this case definitively, at least for me it was definitive, it definitively proved that in fact, every single spirit is not a demon. And I already knew that from experience, but it's another good saying of, yeah, you know, that's the thing. And it also proved that sometimes ghosts are your relatives that have passed, your ancestors. Now, whether it is the person you knew or whether it is an impression of them or whatever, I'm not going to get into that because I don't know. But it proves that that is a thing. And this is the first time, and I've been doing this for over 30 years, and this is the first time in my life that we have a documented case of somebody's relatives coming to greet them before they died and sit with them as they died and to take them with them after they died. Because when they did the investigation on the spirit box, the spirits told them that the old man who had just passed was with them and that he was okay and that he had no more pain and he was happy and they wanted to try to speak to him. But the spirits said that he didn't understand how to communicate yet because he had just passed. So he didn't have a grasp on, on the, the technical aspect of how to communicate with us yet. And that makes sense because that also proves something. That is a theory that is out there. People wonder why you only see ghosts like from the 17 and 1800s. You never see like a, a ghost pop up on the spirit box and you ask its name and it goes, it's Brittany, bitch, or something like that, right? You don't get those pop reference um, things most often, right? It almost never happens. Usually it's some old timey kind of ghost. And that would make sense if what those spirits were saying was true, and that is that Ghosts cannot communicate right away. Like when you die, you have to kind of learn what you're doing. You got to figure out how it works and figure out how to do it in order to communicate, right? I'm not saying that's 100% fact. I'm saying that is what the spirits said on the spirit box. That's very interesting stuff. So that would make sense to me. And that would kind of give it another little step on the ladder of credibility, that this is something that actually happened. But it's the first time in my entire career that I've ever seen that. Now, you've heard stories of it. It's always the, the antidote everybody kind of talks about where they say, yeah, you know, your relatives will be there when you die, and they'll meet you and greet you and take you home. And it's a beautiful idea. It's a great thought. It's a wonderful, comforting thing to believe. But is it true? Like, that's always been the thing for me. Is it actually true? Or is that just BS that we all tell each other so that we're not afraid? Well, this case showed us that, yes, that, that is true. Now, is it true in every case? I don't know. But was it true in this case? I think so. And once again, 
As I say, I think so. Keep in mind, it could be something else. We didn't experience any negativity. We didn't feel anything bad or evil. Um, when Andy does an investigation, when I do an investigation, there are certain triggers that we kind of pull. You know, there's things that we do to determine what we are dealing with. If we're dealing with something that is demonic or malevolent, or if we're dealing with just a run of the mill haunt or what it is that we're dealing with, there's certain terminology and phrases you use. You quote scripture. There's certain things you can do that will get a reaction from something that is demonic. And that will tell you if you're dealing with something demonic. And in this case, there was none of that. You know, there was nothing that set off alarm bells for, for them that, what they were dealing with was something dark and evil and demonic. So it appears that what we actually had here was a true verified case of somebody's relatives meeting them as they died and taking them with them to the next world, to the afterlife, to heaven or hell or wherever they go. It actually happened. And we had the the honor to be a part of that and to witness it. Now I have some footage that I am going to share in, on this video. And if you're listening to us right now on the radio on Parax on our radio show, um, on the YouTube channel right now, we have kind of changed what we do and you can actually see us now we're on camera and I'm going to be showing footage on camera so that you can watch it. Now this clip is about seven seconds long, I think. And so on the radio, if you're listening there, you're not going to hear anything for six or seven seconds. That's because the clip doesn't have any sound. It is security footage. But if you go to the YouTube page, youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr., shameless plug, numero uno, then you can see the video for yourself. And I will also put um, a separate video up that just has the footage and some photographs from the investigation. It'll be a couple minutes long, probably it won't be very long at all, but I'll put that up as well on the YouTube channel. So if you want to see the evidence for yourself after listening to the show, you can go to the YouTube page and you can click on the video and watch it and see it for yourself. But I'm also going to include it here on this show so that the people that are watching this on YouTube can see the footage. And it's about a seven second clip. It shows an orb that is floating through the kitchen and changing direction and changing speed. And it does not look like your run-of-the-mill dust speck kind of orb. I mean, this is a detailed, pretty phenomenal and amazing thing. Now, if you're watching on your phone or something that has a smaller screen, you might not be able to pick up that much detail on the orb in the video. But I have multiple still photographs that I'm going to be putting on the screen as well that you're going to be able to look at. And I'll probably just put one or two up because I, I have a couple that are zoomed in really good and you'll be able to really see the detail on them. It is spectacular. And you'll be able to see what this orb actually looked like that was captured on the video camera and what this old man saw and was reaching up for. Now I'm not going to include that footage of the old man reaching for the orbs and everything. And I know a lot of you watching are going to get pissed about that. You're going to be like, come on, that's the whole reason we want to see it. I get that. Believe me, I get it. As a paranormal investigator, I feel the same way. I want to see the damn evidence. But that was taken pretty much at the moment of death for the old man. I mean, he was right before he died. And I think that is, as much as I want to show that evidence, as much as I'm sure you want to see it, that is just disrespectful as hell. I can't do that. I can't do that to the family. I can't do that to his memory. I can't, my honor does not allow me to do that. So I apologize that I will not be sharing that footage. Um, maybe sometime in the future after some time has passed and the family's had time to process, maybe I'll put it out there if, if they want me to, but I, I don't know because like I said, man, that's right before the dude died and that's really not cool. And you might be watching right now and say, Oh, you're full of crap. Okay. I get it. That's fine. If you want to believe that, that is absolutely your choice. 
I'm not telling you to believe me. I'm going to put the evidence up. You're going to look at it yourself. You're going to be able to see the video of the orb floating into the kitchen. You're going to be able to see the still photographs of the orbs with spectacular detail. So I'm going to go to that now. And while I'm actually on the the orb pictures and everything, I'm going to be talking a little bit through it because I can't leave just dead air on the radio because it'll they might cut off and go to a best of or something and that would suck. So I'm going to be kind of giving a little commentary as I go through so that you can kind of get a good look. But here is that footage. So here you can see the video that I was talking about, how this thing moves down and then back up as it goes across the kitchen. Pretty spectacular. And here you see a couple different photographs. There are still frames from the security footage of these orbs. And on the ones that are, zoomed in notice how spectacular the detail is on those things it is truly remarkable i think let me know down in the comment section what you guys think about it so as you can see that footage was pretty amazing and it shows in the still photographs it shows spectacular detail of the orbs and they are just amazing looking so what i would say is that was not a speck of dust. That was not simply a bug. Because a bug does not have circles like that. I mean, that looked like several circles layered on top of each other. It almost looked like, like a cell, honestly. If you, if you look at a, a cell under a microscope, you're going to see the different parts of the cell. You're going to see the, the membrane. You're going to see the nucleus. You're going to see all of that. And you're going to see kind of the, the protoplasm that's floating in between. And that's kind of what this orb looked like to me. And that's pretty amazing. So I would say that what we're dealing with here is a verified case where an orb actually is something where it's not debunked. And like I said, in the intro to this show, it, it probably changed my mind about orbs. Now, that doesn't mean, and I want to be clear about this because I can hear, I can just hear the backbenchers and the ankle biters just going off now. Oh, we got him this time. He's full of crap. We can prove it. Hershey said that orbs are 100% real and anybody that doesn't believe in orbs probably kick puppies and drown kittens and, and throw grandmas out into traffic or whatever nonsense that they're going to say. I can hear it now. But what I'm saying is, that orbs can be actual paranormal evidence. And in this case, profound paranormal evidence. That's what I think when I look at the, that footage and those pictures. I mean, they're amazing, you know? So, as always, you make up your own mind, guys. You judge for yourself. I'm going to give you the evidence. I'm going to show it to you. I already did. And you can make up your own mind what you think. That's the beauty of this wonderful, wonderful country we live in, that you're supposed to be free to choose for yourself and make up your own mind. So that's what you're going to get to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw over to old boy, and I'm going to get his opinion of what he thinks of the footage and the pictures and orbs in general and the case and just all of that, whatever old boy wants to talk about, really, because he rarely sticks to what I what I ask him anyway, he's kind of, he's a rebel, man. He does his own thing and that's wonderful. So with that being said, I'm going to throw over to old boy and then I'll be back on the other side of it to give a little bit more commentary. Very interesting story, guys. Um, what my opinion is going to be is, you know, and I feel really sorry for the family. I rest in peace. Um, my thoughts to the family before he passed away. Now, it says that he was reaching out and saw a bunch of orbs. That's a very possibility. Um, I don't doubt that. And I actually want to see the video. That would be kind of cool. I haven't got to see it yet, guys. So when I check it out, I'll see more of my opinions, what I think. And if I don't think they had that video, so I don't know. I've been, maybe. We'll see what happens. Um, now, the problem I have with they, I guess after he passed away, they had 
done a um an investigation that night i wouldn't have done that and i guess andy didn't want to but the family did so people do know this it wasn't our idea they asked to do it i still wouldn't have done it i still would have waited a week or two some people have a difference of opinion that's not mine i think it's too early for them to say right off the bat they're already uh you know they did an investigation and they said they had talked to him the problem i have with that and I have dealt with it myself. They could be something just saying that. Um, they could pretend to be your family. I'm not saying it's not true. I don't want to con contest anything or say it's not. It's not. But the the thing is, they can pretend to be somebody saying they're talking to them because it it's it's kind of early. You know, it just happened that day. So that night, later on that night, I I don't know, man. I'm not going to say it's impossible. I'm not going to say that. It's really cool. I mean, that's cool that he, before he passed, there's all kinds of orbs going around him and he reached out to him. I believe that part. I believe that. I do believe that. It's a possibility. I have to see it, like I said, but I don't know if there's video of it. But I believe you guys um, on it because I, I believe my team. So, and, it, and like, again, I am condolences to the family. But them saying later on they, they actually did an investigation and they talked to something and said, uh, or the spirit said they, 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 that he's with him. It could be a possibility, but I don't know, man. You never, you can't trust anything. You, you know, they could pretend to be anything. Remember that, guys. I'm not doubting it. I'm, I'm giving my opinion. There is a very much possibility those were the spirits that saw him leave and he, they're with him now. But it also could be something else pretending to be. Just because it wants to say something because the family is there. They like to play games. Remember, entities, everything like that, likes to play games. They like to... How would I say it? They like to pretend. So there's a possibility on that. Now, I want to see everything first. I haven't really seen everything or heard everything of the investigation that's coming up. So then I'll make my own 100% uh, opinion on it. But right now, I don't know, man. It could be a possibility because of what happened earlier with you know him reaching out and they were there and he was talking to something. And it, that could be a very possibility it was the same spirits. But it also could be something else just saying stuff um, to hurt people because it wants people to think something. And you know what? I don't want to hurt the family. To, so I'm not going to argue it or just, just you know, say, oh, no, it's not 100%. No, I'm just giving a possibility. I'm sorry. I'm not a liar. I'm not going to sit here and just say everything's 100% just because something bad. No, there's a possibility it could have just been talking and saying that um, <clears throat> it was the, the guy who passed away, the gentleman, the older gentleman. But it could probably, it could have been the spirits that were there when he passed away reaching out for it. Um, my personal opinion is I don't have any argument on that because I've seen stuff like that, you know, in videos where people pass away and you see something coming out. You never know. People believe in spirits. I, I have my opinions on that. I, I believe there's different lives we live, but I believe you, you, you have to live them to you, you pretty much you run out or you change and you get to where you need to be. And you don't want to come back anymore. I don't want to come back anymore. Me and my wife want to stay that way. Some people believe in heaven. Some people believe in hell. Some people believe in uh, topia. Some people believe we're going to come back as goats, chickens, another human, a female, a male, uh, a rat, a cat. It matters how you lived your life. If you were a bad person, you get to come back as a as a as a fly. If you're a great person, you come back as a as a, a, a dolphin or something. You know what I mean? That that's what I'm saying. But people have different beliefs, uh, and so do I. Um, now, what's interesting is when you do an investigation, sometimes these spirits tell you what you want to hear, or sometimes it's the actual thing you're trying to find. But you got to remember that. That's why I'm kind of on the investigation. I have an iffy on it. I'm not saying 100%. I'm going to go 50-50 just so you guys can... You get it. It's a 50-50 thing. And just so you know, if you see me on video, this is the first time we're doing this. We're doing something new. 
you're actually seeing us. It isn't like, oh, how staring has been for the last four and a half years that we just did another video. Because we're coming up in the world. We're getting well known. Sooner or later, you're going to eventually see us on TV. I predict that. Not right. Not saying it like I'm better than anybody. I just know it's going to happen. Because I have, my opinion is, staring into the abyss is the one of the best kept secrets of all time. They're finding out who we are, but I think we're one of the best. And I also think we're one of the best paranormal groups. Extreme paranormal, because we do a lot of extreme stuff. I'm one of the most extreme people. And I know there's a couple other people out there. Uh, Shadows Mafia, uh, Daryl, he does a lot of extreme stuff. Uh, Tammy um, G, who lives in Texas, she does a lot of extreme stuff. And there's other people. But I wanted to throw them out there. But um, I've never dealt with anything like this. This is really cool. That's why I'm, like, excited. I have never heard that somebody, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very sad for the family. And, you know, he passed away, but... To hear that there was orbs and stuff there, and it, and you could see him, and and I seen him in a video, in one of the videos, but he was talking to him. I believe that part. I believe there's something that was there talking to him. The investigation part could be, could not be. I'm just leaving it there for just you know. But I'm hoping it is. I hope they weren't just getting told because that's messed up all together, and they're being spiteful like always, and. What you don't, when you, remember, when you're doing an investigation, you really don't know what you're really dealing with. They could lie and say that it's your brother it passed away 10 years ago and know stuff, because it does. They do know. They know everything. They watch everything. They know what we're doing. They know how we do things. They watch it. And they see what we like, or they figure out something that we like, and then they'll use it. And, and a lot of people do this. Like, uh, they say a lot of psychics and some who are, are trying to fool people, they'll ask certain questions. They'll ask you like, what was your dad's favorite thing to do? And this and that, or what's your mom's favorite thing to do? Or what was your favorite killer? Where did you like to do? What was your favorite game? And they'll figure it out. And then they'll start catching on how to get you. Cause that's what you have to watch out when you do paranormal investigations. They could just tell you stuff. Oh, I'm talking to this wonderful little girl that passed away. And it could be some evil entity demon. It could be the little girl. It could be a, a ghost just messing with you that, or a spirit. It could be a shadow person messing with you. It, that's what I'm saying. I think it was a little too early, but they asked for Andy to do it. And he didn't want to, but they, they at, insisted. So um, I want to, I want more, I got to get more information on it, guys. And we'll probably do something else about it and follow up on this. That's just my opinion right now. Um, I do believe that part where you can, you can, I, I think you can, but I'm going to be honest. I have died a couple times, not like forever for like a minute or two. I had pneumonia when I was a kid. I don't remember it, but I don't remember anything. Um, doesn't mean it's wrong, but I have a friend who passed away and he said he just seen killers, like killers. And he said it felt really wonderful. And then he said it, he woke up because the nurse woke him up. Um, so, I believe there's something. I believe our dreams have something to do with it too. I believe that that tells us like maybe in other dement dimensions we're at. And that's just my opinion. I'm just saying, I don't say that's a hundred percent fact. I'm just saying these are ideas and what I think could be. And that's why I'm doing this the, the to give different options, not saying, Oh, it's a hundred percent fact that that's what it was because I don't know. Um, I'd have to see this, this situation more. Uh, but to what I've seen, it's awesome. -o. I've rarely ever seen that before. That it's exciting. Not that, like I said, I feel bad for the situation, but the other part is very exciting because it opens more doors of what's out there and what are we looking towards if we pass away in the future, all of us. Um, now, the ghost part, like I said, I don't know. I have my opinions on that part. Um, the spirits, it could have been. 50-50 on that, guys. It, or it could have been something messing around. Or it could have been just lying. Or it could have been the spirits that actually were talking to him before he passed. So that's really cool. All that. And that's just my opinion, guys. I don't know. I'd have to see more of it and hear more of the situation. That's just what I'm taking from it now. Um, it's very cool. Very interesting. Um, I am very sorry for the loss of the, of the, of the, the elderly gentleman. 
um, to his family. Um, I'm very sorry for your loss, and thank you guys. Other than that, James, there you go. That's my opinion. I hope you guys have a good night, and I hope you enjoy this, and leave some more comments. Tell us what you think, guys. Like, write your opinions, what you think is going on, you know, when uh, with this whole situation. Do you think it, he saw that and was talking to them? Do you think it, the, the spirit later on in that day or night um, that they were really talking to them, or you think it was something messing with them just saying that? Or, you know, or was it genuine, those spirits that, were talk you know around him before he passed and he was reaching out to or do you think it was something more sinister you know if you guys have done paranormal investigations i know some of you have and a lot of you probably watch it on tv and you see things there's always something that likes to mess with people so it's a possibility that's just my opinion i hope you guys like the show i'm gonna go ahead and finish that's that's what i'm gonna say for my opinion so there you go james Throwing it over to you, brother. Yeah, as I said earlier, I agree with old boy that the potential is always there when you're dealing with something like this, that it could be something pretending to be a relative. I mentioned that in the beginning of the show. I've said it a couple times. Um, I do agree that that is a, a possibility always. But in this case, I honestly believe that what we witnessed here was actually a homecoming it was this gentleman's relatives that came to to greet him when he died and to usher him to wherever he was headed whether that's heaven or hell or or the afterlife or whatever is is after this i believe that's that's what happened in this case i think we learned a lot from this case. And it's always good when you can learn something from a case that you're working. I think in this case, we learned that n not every ghost is a demon. Not every entity that you encounter is demonic. As I said before, I knew that coming into it because I've been doing this for over 30 years. And my experience has told me that that is the case, that not everything is demonic. That being said, when things are demonic, they don't always let you know real easily. I mean, there are things you can do to kind of draw it out, as I was talking about earlier. And I'm pretty confident that in this case, we weren't dealing with anything that was demonic or malevolent or, or bad in any way. Um, so we learned that, which is awesome. We also kind of proved the old wives' tale of your relatives waiting for you when you die, being there when you pass to, to greet you and to usher you to wherever you're headed. We kind of proved that as well with this case. And to me, that is probably the most important aspect of this case is that it can give people hope and peace when a loved one dies because we've all been through that where somebody we love passes away and and it's sad man it's sad because you miss them that's really what it boils down to you're not so much sad for them you think you are but in all reality you're actually sad for yourself because they're not going to be in your life anymore and you're going to miss them a lot. And so in my mind, this discovery can bring some peace and some, some solace to people that have lost somebody that they loved. Know that they're not gone. They may be gone from here. They may not be alive anymore. You may not be able to talk to them anymore for now, but they're not gone forever. They will be back. Uh, they will be there when you die to, to greet you and to take you wherever you're headed, which is an amazing, amazing thing to know. I mean, myself in my life, I've lost people that, that I love dearly and to know beyond any doubt now that they're still out there and 
in in most cases they're okay, you know. I mean, and not in all cases because let's face it, if if you're not saved, if you're a Christian that believes in heaven and hell, then we believe that if you're not saved, then you're headed to hell, which sucks. Uh, so those people probably aren't doing all right that weren't saved, but the ones that were, we're going to see them again. And we're going to have eternity hanging out with them and having fellowship and having that family time again, which is so, so awesome. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode. I hope that you learned something. I know I did. And in my view, whenever I can learn something, it is a victory, you know, and it's, it's really awesome. And it's, it's a, a great lesson to everybody starting out in the paranormal and who's been in the paranormal for a long time. This was a case that was a write-off. It was a case that we never even imagined would be anything. We thought, okay, this is going to be easy. We're going to go in, debunk these stupid orbs and be out the same day. And it's job done. We really did not believe that this was going to teach us anything, that it was going to amount to anything, or that we were going to get any kind of good evidence from it. And it turns out that this is going to rank up there with some of the best ones we've ever done. Not because of danger, not because of, of how scary it was, or because we captured full body apparitions or anything like that. This one is going to rank up there among the top because the message of hope that it brings is powerful. The knowledge that death is not the end, that we will continue on after this. And not only that we'll continue on after this, but that we don't have to continue on alone. The people that we love will be there sooner or later. Either they're already there when we go, or if we go first, they'll be along. All we have to do is wait, and they'll be there. And then we have eternity with our loved ones. And that is a powerful and a beautiful message. So for me, that is the main takeaway from this case and from this episode is that you're not alone and death isn't the end. So anybody out there that's watching that is afraid of death, you're afraid of dying or anybody out there that's watching who's lost a parent or lost a child or a sibling or somebody, a spouse, that they, somebody that they really, really loved. Just know that they're still out there somewhere. They're not gone. And you can and, and very well might see them again when you're on that side of the grave instead of this side. That's pretty spectacular, man. Um, one warning that I would give to everybody watching is just because they're out there doesn't mean that you should try to contact them because most times you're going to get something that's not your relative. And if you get something that is dark and, and malevolent or demonic, it's going to use the fact that you miss your relative. It's going to use your love for them as a doorway to enter your life and to try to harm you. And nobody wants to see that happen. So I would say, don't try to contact them. Just know that they're there and that you'll see them again. And take take solace in that. Because that's no small thing. I mean, that that is an amazing thing. So with that being said, I'm going to uh, throw back over to Old Boy and let him get his shout-outs and all that in. And I'd just like to to say that any of you that have gotten to the point in your, your paranormal journey 
where you are many decades in or, or many years in and you believe that there's nothing left to learn or nothing left to do, I would say this is a great example of of proving that you're wrong. There's always something to learn. There's always new things to experience, new things to learn, new things to see. And you can always change your mind. I hate that, that old saying that somebody has gone down a bad road, you know, because the thing about roads is there's exits, you know, you can, you can go down a bad road. You can make mistakes. You can do the wrong thing. Sometimes we're human beings. It happens, but there's always an exit. There's always a place that you can get off and turn around. You can change the behavior. You can learn a lesson and change your mind and change your entire outlook and and everything about yourself. And that's an amazing message as well, I think, that some people need to hear. Because I've had people ask me, how do they get to where I am? How do they accomplish what I've accomplished? And the easy answer that I always give them is get to work. You know, if you want to be a writer, start writing. If you want to be an actor, start acting. If you want to do radio, start doing radio. You're not going to be the greatest at it right off the bat unless God gave you this amazing gift to do it. But if it's something that you love, just get busy and you'll get better with time and stay with it. Because think about this idea. Imagine how many people quit doing something that they loved right before they were about to be successful. They might have put five, ten years in, and they might have finally got to the point where they're just like, you know what, screw this, man. This is never going to happen for me. I've been busting my hump. I've been sacrificing. Everybody else is out having fun and doing things, and I'm working my ass off, and I'm getting nowhere. Well, what if the very next day was going to be your big break? You don't know God's timing. What if the very next day you would have been successful? What if the very next day somebody would have came in and seen what you were doing that could have made a decision, was in a position that could have skyrocketed your career, but you gave up one day before? And I bet you that's happened a lot to a lot of people. You just got to keep plugging it away, man. If God put something on your heart that is something that you love to do, just do it. Don't worry about being successful. Don't worry about being rich. Don't worry about being famous. That stuff will come. If you put in the work and you are true to it, it'll come eventually. You will get recognition. You will get some level of fame. You'll get some money from it. But... If you're doing it for those reasons, you're not going to be successful. You got to do stuff because you love it. You got to put your heart and your soul into it. And when you do that, you will be rewarded eventually. You just got to keep plugging away, man. Don't give up the day before you're about to break through and be successful. That really has nothing to do with what we were talking about. Just something that popped into my head and I wanted to to kind of pass along. So I'm going to throw over to old boy and let him give his shout outs. And then I'll be back after that to wrap up the show. Thank you, James. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on staring into the abyss on Parax radio every Sunday nights at nine Pacific, 12 Eastern and the best of show. I think it's on Tuesdays at five Pacific eight Eastern time on Tuesday nights on Parax radio. Check it out. Uh, you guys want to listen to any of our old shows, go to James Hershey's YouTube page, subscribe. If you guys want any merchandise, he'll tell you where to go, get shirts, all kinds of cool stuff, COVID masks, cups. So check us out. I hope you guys enjoyed this show. I really did. It's another crazy story. And good night, misfits, sugar ladies, monster lovers, and demon hunters. I love you and blessed be. Good night. Thank you, old boy. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. This was a cool one for me. 
Because like I said in the beginning, I learned something from it. And I love learning. That's like my favorite thing in the world is to, to gather knowledge and to learn new things. And also to confirm things that I already thought I knew, but didn't have any solid evidence for. That's awesome too. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this thing. I hope that, that it spoke to you. I hope that it brings you some hope and some peace. Uh, let me know down in the comment section when this hits YouTube if any of those things are true. If you took anything away from this episode, if you enjoyed it. Also, let me know if you like the video format. It's something new we're trying. Um, we've been talking about doing it for quite a long time, but really we're, we're a radio show. So it's not like we have a lot of outlets other than YouTube to, to do this, to where we have video out there. But now there's a lot of new things coming out. I mean, you've got like Paraflix, which is like a streaming service for, for uh, paranormal stuff. Um, I'm going to be actually on a show on Paraflix coming up in, in the end of July, uh, the Disembodied Voices television show. Uh, they had me on as a guest there. And I did like an hour interview, something like that. And uh, that's going to be airing into July. I'll let you know the exact date when I have a more concrete um, air date and time and all that kind of stuff. But there's platforms out like that now that we can put out video as well as, as audio. I mean, we're always going to do the radio show because that's our bread and butter. That's what we do. And I love radio. Radio is such a wonderful, intimate uh, medium to where you can really get in close with somebody and talk to them, you know, because when, when you're listening to radio, you're not goofing off with the kids. You're not eating dinner. You're not running around doing things. When you're listening to radio, you're either in your car driving somewhere. So you're paying attention to the road and you're paying attention to the radio. So, I mean, you don't have a whole lot of competing noise to deal with. It's just the radio playing. Um, if you're listening in your home, you're listening usually with headphones because your wife is watching a movie or somebody else is doing something. So you want to be able to hear. So you got your headphones in and that's an intimate experience too, where you're just kind of sitting there and listening. So you have me in your ear talking to you. And I love the intimacy of radio. It, it can't be matched by any other entertainment venue. I don't think, I mean, movies can't do it. TV can't do it. Uh, books can as well, but books are, are a lot longer term than radio. You know, if you want to talk to somebody through a book, man, you got to wait for them to buy the book and then read the book, which sometimes takes weeks or months, depending on how fast somebody reads. Uh, that's also an intimate experience though, but it's kind of one-sided because I've already said my piece long ago and you're just reading what I wrote a long time ago with radio. You're listening as I'm talking to you. And that's really cool. And I, I love radio and I'll always do it. I think, uh, but we're also going to spread out, man. We got, I've done, I've done two television shows in the last couple weeks that I went and filmed. So they'll be coming out. Um, we have a couple television shows that we might actually do just us where they will be our shows. Uh, we're talking to some people now, uh, at different networks. I'm not going to go into who and what network and all that kind of stuff, but there are talks being had and we might end up on one of the major networks doing a television show. If that happens, obviously we'll give you all the information and it would be a great blessing. So th there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of stuff happening and I'm real happy for that. Um, so now let me go ahead and give the shameless plugs and all that so we can get out of here. The YouTube channel is youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. Shameless plug number two, because I did one earlier. The merchandise store is in the description box of the videos on YouTube. If you want merch, we got t-shirts, we got hats, we got all kinds of stuff. Um, you can go to the YouTube channel on one of the episodes of Staring or Paranormal News or Tales. Uh, in the description box, you'll find the link to the merch store. So you can go there and get merch if you want it. That's pretty much it, guys. I, I just want to say that I love you and I appreciate you and... Let me know, like I said, down in the comment section, what you guys think of the video format. If it's something that you like, that you'd like to see more of, or if you really don't care about the video much. I, I like it. I, I enjoy it. I think it's, it's good. I think it's going to make the show do better on YouTube 
Because when we first started on YouTube, man, we were getting hundreds of thousands of views all the time. And then we did a couple shows where we talked about stuff that the government and the left and everybody didn't want us to talk about. And it was it was hilarious because they say there's no censorship and, and all that um, shadow banning and all that stuff is BS. But literally the next day after we did that show, we went from getting tens of thousands of views a day on every video to getting 10 or 15 views. So you tell me, did that many people decide they didn't want to listen to us anymore? I don't think so because our numbers are still good everywhere else on all the other platforms. Our numbers are great, but only YouTube. So, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And like I said, let me know down in the comments until we speak to you again, love many trust few and do harm to none. God loves you. And so do we. Bye-bye.